Hello, welcome. This is um, Edexcel's C4 January 2007 uh, paper. This is question 5. Um, for the first little part of this question, we use uh, a case of implicit differentiation, and then it's just a case of um, using trig. Well, we have trig in the implicit differentiation, the implicit differentiation uh, that, that we do, but um, we're just going to be using it in the context would be sort of finding angles in them cast diagrams I talked about. Um, but really, the second part of this question uh, it isn't really so much a topic that we've covered. It's more of a you know the them logical things where you you have to think round the problem. Okay, so we are given this equation. Um, sine x plus cos y equals 0.5 and we're asked to come up with the differential equation using so yeah we're asked to differentiate that um, using implicit different implicit differentiation now the sign changes to a cos the sign doesn't change okay but when we differentiate a cos, it changes to a negative sign. But remember, this is a negative, as this is a function of y, so just as that's a function of x, cos y is a function of y. When we differentiate a function of y, we have to put dy dx next to it. And as I said, we went over all of that in um, the implicit differentiation tutorial. Um, okay, so we, when we differentiate 0 0.5, that's becomes that becomes zero okay so therefore you could make this equal to each other so as I said you could just go straight into it and put dy dx equals but uh, as I said I'm going to break it down into a couple of steps so we know therefore they must be equal to each other so therefore sine y dy dx equals cos x okay um so therefore dy dx to both, both by both sides by sine y, so it's dy dx equals cos x over sine y. Now you have to leave it as that because x and y we presume to be different, so you can't just put tan of x or, or tan of y, so that's a key thing to watch out for. Okay, so that's, that's part A, that's, that's only worth two marks, and you can see why it's, it's a very straightforward question, but you can also see why one or two might go wrong with that. But really, it's quite a nice sort of start to the question five. Um, this next part is a little bit more confusing, um, but at first it seems okay. So we're told that x lies between uh, negative pi and positive pi, and y lies between negative pi and positive pi. Okay, so we just two little bits of information that we get given: negative pi y, positive pi. Okay. Um, Find the coordinates where dy dx equals zero. So obviously dy dx equals zero and our dy dx equals cos x over sine y. Therefore, cos x over sine y must equal zero. Now, it may strike you as a little odd straight away. Now, what you would naturally do there is go on to go, okay, well therefore cos x must be zero. Okay, and then get a value for x by doing cos inverse of zero. But just before I put that in my calculator to work that out, we need to find a value, the coordinates. So we need to find a value for y, but our sine of y equals zero. So how do we work that out? Do we do sine y equals zero, or what do we do? Well, what we do, I'll just give a brief overview of this question. Okay, so what we do here is, obviously we've done it right so far, we, we make cos x equal to zero, because cos x over sine y is zero, so cos x must be zero. Therefore, we inverse x, we inverse cos inverse zero to get x, and using the cast diagram and following this um, idea between positive and negative pi, we get a value for x. And then we, with them values of x, we just sub into uh, this above equation uh, and rearrange to get y. Obviously, we need to cos inverse the answer, but that's essentially what we're going to do in this question. We don't need to do um, well. Sorry. And then when we've got a value for y, um, sorry, I'll go over that again because I kind of missed out another step. So, right, just to go over it again, because I think I missed out a little bit. 
So cos x equals 0, yes, all of what I've said so far is fine. So if you get what I've said, so cos x equals 0, find the value of x by doing cos inverse of 0, and finding x between negative and positive pi. And then with them values of x, sub in to this equation. So sign x of these values of x, yes? Right, and then when you've got these values of x, you sub into this equation and then find what cos y equals and then cos inverse to get the y. But that is kind of a sort of an angle, so we need to do another cast diagram for y. So basically, to sum up, we do a cast diagram initially to find when we do cos inverse of x and then we do another two cast diagrams if that's what you do to find out the angles. Um, because when we got these two values of x, we're going to get two values of x, by the way. We do, we, the first value of x that we find, we use that value to find the first value of y. And then we use that value on a cast diagram to get values of y. And then we use the other x value, uh, sub it into this equation, find another value for y, and then do another cast diagram to find two other values of y if there is some. So we could end up with more values of y than we've got values of x. I mean, we'd hope not, but that could potentially become the case. Okay, um, in terms of, you know, you might have two of the same x values. Obviously, because they're coordinates, you wouldn't just have a y value and no x value. Um, what I mean is you might have a couple of the same x values, but for a couple of the same x values, you might have a different y value. Now, I might become talking complete rubbish, um, because you don't understand the word I'm saying, but I'm just trying to give you a bit of an overview of how I'm going to tackle this question. Um, but necessarily, you would not have, necessarily, that's why it's quite a hard question, you might not have seen that. Okay, so, do the cos inverse of x. The cos inverse of 0 to get x. Um, and if you were to do that, you would get a value um, of x to be pi on 2. Okay, so as I said, now we're going to draw a cast diagram. As I said, you know, you don't have to. This is my personal favourite. Oh, it sounds sad, that. So, it's cos all sine and tan. We want where cos and all is positive. Because, obviously, all is included in cos. Um, and the angle is pi on 2. We want it in radians because they are the two um, ranges we'd be given. Obviously, in radians. Okay, so both of them angles are pi on 2. Now, we can either go the positive direction or the negative. But we can't go past halfway, so therefore x is either positive or negative um, pi on 2. Okay, so, so we get two values for x, even though it looks like I've only wrote one down as a positive or negative version of it. Okay, so that's the values of x that we've got. Now we need to sub into the equation that we originally got to find the value for y. Or values, I should say. Okay, so the first value I'm going to choose is where x is plus a half. Now, what I'm going to do is rewrite out the equation that we get given originally. So sine x plus cos y equals 0.5. Now, the reason I'm not using cos x over sine y equals 0 is because, well, we... If you were to use, if you were to use that cos x over sine y is 0 and sub in x, sub in your values for x, then, well, we know that makes cos x zero, so therefore y must be zero as well, um, wouldn't make any sense at all. Um, so that's why we have to use the first equation. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to put x to be plus a half. So we still have to put sine x of a half because it can't be zero because cos of pi over two is zero, so basically as we're subbing in here, we've got to put x to be with a sine. Okay, so sine pi on two, plus cos y equals 0.5. So then you calculate what um, cos, sorry, sine of pi on 2 is, you should get 1. So 1 equals, so 1 plus cos y equals 0.5. So therefore, cos y is equal to 0.5. So therefore, uh, y is equal to the cos inverse of uh, 0.5 or a half, same thing. Okay. And then we draw a cast diagram for this, okay? Because, so, yeah, we get a value for y, we do the cos inverse of a half. Remember, we're in, still in radians here. So if you do the cos inverse of a half or y, you should get pi on 3, okay? So that's our first, our second sort of um, cast diagram that we've got to draw. And that's the angle in it, okay? 
So this is why it's a little bit confusing. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the cos um, angle, right? So um, cos and all is positive. So these two values are um, pi and three. Now I should mention actually before I continue, um, just realised pi on two is exactly the ninety degree sort of angle. Yeah, what is ninety degree angle? So really that should be vertical and this should be perfectly vertical over here there shouldn't be any difference between this line and the vertical but it doesn't matter the right answers okay so these are the two values for y so therefore as we can't go we can just we can only go positive or negative we can't go past halfway um so therefore we just get y to be plus or minus pi on three but that's not the only values for y okay because we also need to see what happens when x is negative for half because that's they're the values for y when we have x to be the value of a half so you could put when x equals um sorry when x equals pi on two not half sorry they get these values of y so when x equals a half you get y to be um positive uh pi on three or negative pi on three okay we need to know what happens to y when we use x value to be negative pi on two Okay, so similar sort of thing, okay, so sine, instead of positive pi and 2, we get negative pi and 2, okay, plus cos y equals 0 0.5, right, so we sub our values for that in, right, um, same sort of thing, so find out what sine pi and 2 is, negative pi and 2, it's negative 1, plus cos y equals 0.5. Now you should know straight away, can't do anything else with that. Because when we move this across, what we'll get is cos y equals 1.5. And you should know that's wrong because we can't get cos of any angle, because y essentially is an angle. I mean, in terms of this, it's radians, but you can't get any angle in, in degrees or radians that gives the, the value for cos of that angle bigger than 1. Because naturally, the cos graph has maximum and the minimums of positive one and negative one so you can't have value that suddenly changes that um okay it's either going to be between positive one and zero or uh, sorry it's either going to be positive between positive it's going to be between positive one and negative one okay it's not going to be 1.5 so therefore there's no solutions at all when x so when x is negative pi on two there are no solutions for y Okay, hence there's no coordinates because we can't perceive that to be correct, okay? Um, because we want the coordinates, okay? So that's that's the key thing, wording of this question. Alright, um, just double check, okay? So we know y is positive or negative pi on 3 when x is positive pi on 2. So let me just make sure there's no other answers that I've missed. I mean, the way this question is going, I won't be surprised. Uh, <laughs> but great faith in me, hey? Right, um... Okay, so... In the specified range, so the coordinate... So, using what we now know, um, therefore our, our range is... Because we've only... Because when we get negative pi on 2 to be x, we don't get any solutions for y. So therefore there can't be any coordinates. So we can only take coordinates when x is pos positive pi on 2. So therefore we just use the values for y that we get for pi on 2. So x, when x is pi on 2, we either get y to be positive or negative pi on 3. So that gets us two sets of coordinates. Okay. Um, so it's positive pi on 3. Or when x is or x it could be pi and 2 and y could be negative pi and 3. Okay? So really we get these two coordinates. Even though you could say, okay, well you put pi and 2 and then positive or negative here, pi and 3. Just nice to have two sets of coordinates. So the examiner sees that you've got two different values for y and not just ignoring one of them. Okay, so that's that's question five. Um it's it's quite a nasty one actually, I think, because you have to do a bit of thinking for it, and that's always a bit of a bummer. But um, you know, these th these things happen in life. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, it's been helpful. 
and as I say, sorry about the lighting if it's not been brilliant, probably switch it on after this video, um, so it's get a little bit dark, but anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video for the question six.